Baroness Featherstone. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Uh, my Lords, the funding for interferon free hepatitis C treatment will be provided by NHS England via its allocation from HM Treasury, as with all NHS treatments. I, I thank the Noble Lord for his answer, and I declare an interest in as much as my nephew was a, Nick was a haemophiliac who died having been infected with hepatitis C. And what I'm seeking today is assurance from the Noble Lord, the Minister, that none of the 125 million, an inadequate sum, that has been promised to the survivors or the families of those who were likewise infected, none of that is used to pay for treatment by the new interferon C, which is 99% secure, licensed by NHS. I want his assurance that none of that money will be used for enhanced payment and all of that money will go to support those living or those who have been bereft. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't think I can answer that question fully standing here. I don't think I fully understand it. Perhaps I could meet with the noble lady outside. But, um, all I can say is this, that, um, uh, that um, NHS England are, um, are using it, the, the new inter uh, are, are funding the new interferon-free treatments in accordance with the NICE technology appraisals, and that they, that they are... Um, prioritizing people on the basis of unmet need, and, and that the, the, the modeling assumption shows that I think 10,000 people will receive the new treatment in the coming year. I can't answer the specifics of her question, but I will follow up outside if I can. My lords, my lords the, there are estimated 220,000 individuals in the United Kingdom chronically infected with hepatitis C virus. The deaths from end-stage liver disease and cancer of livers due to the virus in under 60s doubled over the last decade. We have an interferon-free treatment, a drug that is effective in both successfully treating the disease as it reduces the viral load in 98% of patients treated to virtually zero in the whole spectrum of genome of hepatitis C virus. Therefore, it is an effective preventative drug for developing end-stage disease. It has the potential to eradicate the disease in the population. So in that scenario, why would we only treat 10,000 patients per year, as the guidance says, for the next two years, and not treat every patient that is a chronic carrier of hepatitis C virus? Uh, my Lords, there is clearly a budgetary constraint here. I mean, 220,000 people is the number of people that the Noble Lord mentions. I thought it was slightly less than that, but 220,000 people. This drug costs many tens, of, many tens of thousands of pounds per treatment. Uh, clearly, we can, we, however much we would like to treat 220,000 people, it is just not feasible to do so. So therefore, that is why we have NICE, and, and NICE have produced their, their appraisals, and they have said, that using their modelling, that um, the number of people who need to be treated this coming year are likely to be between 7,000 and 10,000, rising to 15,000 um, by, by 2021. But I do agree with the Noble Lord, this, this interferon-free treatment is a massive improvement on previous treatments with a very, very high cure rate. My, my Lords, this is a wonderful treatment, but what has happened is blatant rationing. And he says it's down to money, but can he tell me this? Because it's long puzzled me. The government reached an agreement with the pharmaceutical industry, a five-year agreement, that any additional cost over a baseline plus inflation would be refunded by the industry. So every quarter, his department gets millions of pounds back from the drugs industry. So, my lords, why, therefore, are arbitrary limits at local level being placed on the provision of new drugs? What is actually happening to that rebate money? Is, in fact, it going back to the Treasury and not going to the NHS? Because this is quite unnecessary for there to be this rationing. I, I, I mean, it's... Well, I feel as we're, we're living on a different planet. Of course there's going to be budgetary constraints. That, that some of these new drugs are hugely expensive. Now, we have got a very good scheme, the PPRS scheme that the Noble Lord refers to, which does enable us to get rebates from Big Pharma. But some of these new drugs are extremely expensive. I mean, I'm not gonna, I can't tell you what the exact cost of this, of this interferon-free treatment of hepatitis C is, but I can tell uh, members of this House that it is many tens of thousand pounds for a treatment. There are 220 
20,000 people who could benefit from this treatment, according to my noble, the noble lord behind me. That is many billions of pounds. If we spend many billions of pounds on this particular drug, there are many billions of pounds that we won't be able to spend on mental health or in other parts of the NHS. My lords, my lords, um, if there are budgetary constraints, my lords. My Lords, could my noble friend be kind enough to tell the House um, what the 200,000 people who will not receive treatment this year are expected to do, how long they are expected to wait for treatment, and bearing in mind that most or many of them will develop cirrhosis and liver cancer and go on to die, how much it will cost the taxpayer and the National Health Service to care for and treat each one of those patients through to death, and how much less it is than the cost of providing treatment today. Uh, my Lords, there are many people who, who suffer from hepatitis C who, actually, who, who, do, who, who are asymp asymptomatic and they don't actually know that they've got hepatitis C. So I think the figure of 220,000, I don't know whether that, tr that figure is exactly true or not. But people who do have it can have um, treatment using interferon um, as that drug, which is an extremely unpleasant treatment. It can take up to a year. There are some very horrible side effects. So this, this new drug is, in many ways, a miracle drug. It is a fantastic drug, but it is incredibly expensive. And we have to accept, not just in hepatitis C, but in many cancer treatments as well, that there are going to be some drugs that are too expensive to, to spend on huge numbers of people. My Lords, if uh, there are budgetary constraints, surely those victims who were infected by state action should have priority. But is the noble Lord aware that there are many Welsh patients who uh, were infected with contaminated blood in English hospitals and they're now being used in a game of pass the parcel between the UK government and the Welsh government. So can he now say what was agreed at the meeting on the 24th of March between his officials and officials of the Welsh government because patients in Wales have not been able to get an answer from the, active, uh, the acting chief medical officer of the Welsh government about this or perhaps he could write to me. Uh, my Lords, the basis of, um, of making available this new drug for hepatitis C is based around clinical need, not the route of infection. But there is a consultation going on about whether or not a special fund might be established for those who have, be, who have uh, received infective blood. I can't answer specifically on the issue about the Welsh people, but I will write to her on that matter. My Lords, I declare my interest as Chairman of U University College London Partners and Business Ambassador for Healthcare and Life Sciences. What progress has been made on the Accelerated Access Review, uh, which is supposed to be able to address some of these important issues with regard to adoption of innovation into routine practice in the NHS? Yes, the, the Noble Lord makes a very, very good point. And of course, it is hope, we hope as well the Accelerated Access Review will lower the cost of some of these drugs by improving the way that, or shortening the time in which it takes to approve um, some of these new drugs. We hope that the, um, the Accelerated Access Review will report within a couple of months.